All right. Well, I suppose it's that time. So I know how difficult it can be to make an 8 o'clock class any day of Autodesk University, but I have to imagine that it's uh, a little bit more difficult on the third day, right? <laughs> so uh, hopefully everyone's had their coffee. Uh, hopefully the lights being dim won't put anyone to sleep. Uh, I have a lot of uh, great stuff to share with you guys this morning, so thank you guys for showing up. Uh, I know it's early and such. So anyway, well, let's go ahead and get started. So this is Excelling with AutoCAD, no programming required. Um, just real quick to kind of introduce myself. Um, my name is Donnie Gladfelter. I'm a business development manager with CAD Microsystems. Uh, just real quick, CAD Microsystems is just one of Autodesk's uh, platinum partners. So uh, essentially what that means is I, I go around and, and help uh, customers like yourself uh, across the US here. Uh, implementing Autodesk's design solutions. But uh, frankly, I think what's probably more important than really my role today was sort of my role from yesterday, so to speak. And, you know, it, it essentially kind of started out as a, an incredibly curious little high school student. And I attended uh, some drafting classes back in high school and, and had some great educators that really sort of aligned me with my passions. And while I left high school thinking I wanted to become an engineer, I quickly found that it was really the technology I was passionate about. And that's kind of how I came here today. So for the last uh, six years or so, I've kind of been working in a capacity such as this as a trainer, columnist, and author. Um, just real quick by a show of hands, how many folks in here are Augie members? Awesome. You guys are incredible. So. Um, I've authored many articles in Augie World, and I'm also a former board of director for them. I just came off the board last year. So uh, for those of you who didn't raise your hand, I'll just give a, a quick Augie plug. The, boot, the, uh, the exhibit hall will be open a little bit later this uh, afternoon. Go by the Augie booth, sign up. There's a lot of uh, great information, a lot of great community information that you can really dial into throughout the year. So outside of that, I also authored uh, one of the official training guides for, for AutoCAD, AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT, no experience required. And so that really kind of uh, brought me to here. And really, the, the inspiration for this class came from stuff I did in industry before I, I began working in the capacity I do today. I always remember, obviously, AutoCAD was my primary design tool, one of my favorite things installed on my computer, but probably my, my second favorite application installed on my computer was, what, Microsoft Excel, right? And based on the fact that everyone of you are here, I'm guessing that, that you're much like myself in that capacity, that, that AutoCAD and Excel play a pretty critical role in your day-to-day -day workflow. And so uh, with that really kind of telling the story of myself, I kind of sat out on this quest over the years of trying to find ways to make the two of those work a little bit better together. And a number of years ago, I authored a couple blog posts on Excel. And they are, to this day, some of my most popular blog posts, and uh, hence the inspiration for this class. So it's, uh, it's my pleasure to share this information with you guys today. So just real quick, what is this class? So what I hope you guys will see is the purpose of this class is really just to combine the power of Microsoft Excel, which I think everyone in here uses, and AutoCAD. And the, the big asterisk that I'm putting on that, of course, is without any necessary programming. So really what I want out of this class for everyone is the things that I share with you to be things that you can essentially accomplish with an out-of-the-box installation of AutoCAD. You don't have to go back and customize AutoCAD in any way. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some questions about, can I do this or that? And in many cases, the answer is yes, but some programming is required, right? And so what we're going to do in this class is just focus on the things that we can accomplish with an out-of-the-box installation of AutoCAD. And I think you guys will be impressed at some of the things that we can accomplish with you know, what might seem as uh, a kind of um, simple approach to things here. So uh, more specifically, some of the things that we're going to look at here uh, we're going to look at sort of uh, a couple foundational topics, and, and I'll get into this here in a moment, but we're going to essentially look at the way that we can directly connect, obviously, AutoCAD and Excel, get the two of them talking together, right? And then once we get the two of them talking together, there's a lot more things that we can do. So updating drawing data, uh, writing to block attributes, automating some tasks with scripting, 
which I know Scripty might kind of disqualify for the title of the class, but uh, since it's just typing commands at the command line, I think it, it still kind of falls into the no programming required. So as I said, what I hope everyone will sort of walk away from this class um, you know, with the knowledge of is that you'll be able to apply these two tools with just the installation that you already have at your desk. So some of our specific topics, and this is just straight out of the, the, the handout and the write-up for this class that was on the AU website, but uh, these are some of the specific, or the specific topics that we're going to be talking about. And just to, to kind of take a step back, I am, just for the benefit of everyone, going to review some foundational topics, right? So we have two foundational topics that we really need to understand in order to kind of make some of the cooler magic happen here. And that first, as I'll describe it, foundational topic is this concept of data links. And data links, I'll get into that here in a moment, but that's essentially the mechanism that we have to get AutoCAD and Excel talking together. The other foundational component that we need to kind of make all the, the cool stuff happen here is this concept of a data extraction table. And I know many of us have probably used the two independently, uh, maybe one or the other, maybe both, but again, just for the benefit of everyone, I'm going to review those foundational topics before we kind of bring them together. Uh, sort of a metaphor I like to use there is I like peanut butter and I like jelly, and, you know, as, as yummy as a peanut butter sandwich is, I'd much rather have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about peanut butter, we're going to talk a little bit about jelly, and we're going to bring it together into a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You probably never thought you'd hear AutoCAD describe in the context of peanut butter and jelly, right? Don't worry, the jokes get worse. But <laughs> So, you know, once we discuss those two, we bring them together. I'm also going to review on a couple other topics here as well that, that I've found pretty helpful for just the various tasks and such that I've worked through over the years. Uh, the first of those is this idea of sort of automating some tasks. I'm going to use a, a very simple example uh, of how to sort of script some information, kind of take tabular data, as we'll call it. That's essentially the, the technical term for data that we have in Excel, right? and generate geometry of some sort from that through a script file. And, and then probably the, uh, one of my favorite things, and, and I should say this was actually a workflow I developed years ago before the dawn of Sheet Set Manager. I had a six-sheet set of drawings that I needed to manage without Sheet Set Manager, and I needed to keep the title blocks up to date. And so uh, back in, I think, the era of around AutoCAD 2002 or so, I came up with this, uh, this workflow for updating block attributes from an Excel spreadsheet. And so, uh, while I'm not going to show this in the context of title blocks anymore, we of course have Sheet Set Manager today, so I think we have a, a better tool for that particular task. I am going to show another task that I think is uh, very common among us. So, um, let's see. So, one more thing, and, and I want to spend as much time as we can inside of the software. I'm not going to PowerPoint you guys to death. I know you guys have probably sat through your share of PowerPoint presentations this week, right? But before we jump into the, the actual presentation here, I, I did want to speak for a moment about the handout that I prepared for this class. So uh, I, I've had the opportunity to speak here at Autodesk University and attend Autodesk University for uh, a number of years now. And having attended classes much like you are here, I have been in those classes where the instructor is just throwing out this you know, metric ton of information. And I'm stuck there in my seat, like yourself right now, just taking these diligent notes, right? You're just you know, buried into your notepad. And what I found, of course, is when I left those classes, I, I took wonderful notes, but I didn't feel like I really got too much out of the presentation itself. And, and I'm not going to discourage anyone in here from taking notes. But what I, I want to highlight is the handout. If you downloaded it and looked at it, you probably noticed that it's uh, quite lengthy. Uh, let's see, it looks like it's 44 pages in length. And I did that very intentionally. Um, if you look at your handout, everything I'm going to show on the screen here is detailed in a step-by-step -step manner. In fact, I, I've applied kind of one of my preferred methods of, of authoring technical exercises, and it's uh, through this concept of a SAR table. I don't know if anyone's heard the term SAR before. It's not some sort of disease that you might contract from using AutoCAD too much. 
uh, but instead it's, uh, it just stands for step action result. So obviously it's a step-by-step -step exercise. And what I've tried to do here to, to kind of mitigate the, the need for everyone to take studious notes throughout the class here is I have provided the step with an illustration of what you're to do. Click OK, browse to here, that type of thing, as well as a complementary result of everything. So I've gone through exercises like this in the past, and you know I got the step, but then I find out that the result that I needed earlier wasn't the case. So I've, I've tried to invest a lot of time in the handout here so that you guys can, can hopefully focus on the presentation, and I'll certainly welcome any questions throughout the presentation. and. Uh, and, and all of that. Um, again, feel free to take notes, but that was my intent with the, the handout. Don't worry, you don't necessarily need the handout if you don't have it. If you have it, I will follow it throughout the, uh, the class here today. But what I wanted was, again, a good resource that you guys could take back to your desk uh, when you get back to your office uh, next week, or uh, maybe some of you guys are, live a little bit closer than I do from Richmond, Virginia. So with that, let me go ahead and jump on into the software, unless there's any questions at this stage. Does that sound good, everyone? All right. So all right. So as you guys know, we are going to be flip-flopping quite a bit between AutoCAD and Excel. As I mentioned in sort of the introductory piece here, we have, as I like to describe it, two foundational topics that we really need to understand in order to make some of the cooler stuff that I'm going to show you uh, kind of come together. Again, the, the peanut butter and jelly analogy that I, I used there. And so that first foundational component that we need is this concept of data links, right? And so if we want to kind of relate this to something else that, that you might be familiar with inside of AutoCAD, we can uh, certainly probably relate that to the concept of an XREF, right? An external reference, we're going to browse out to a file that's not in here, and I want to bring it in here in some way. The difference, of course, is with a, an XREF, we're talking about showing some sort of geometric properties about something, as, uh, whereas with Excel, we're going to be taking a look at some sort of tabular data. So there's a couple ways that I can accomplish this. And I'm going to show you guys kind of the long way first, just so we can kind of understand what's going on in the background. And then I'm going to kind of revisit this and show you a little bit easier of a method to accomplish the same thing. Um, but I think it's kind of important to kind of understand the full landscape here. So to get started with data links, we can, we can do this in a couple of different ways. But what I'm going to do is actually just right here on the Home tab, go to my annotation panel, and we have a table command, right? This is just the the regular everyday table command, no smoke and mirrors or anything here. And if you've used the table command in the past, which I'm assuming most of us probably have, uh, we know if I, if I hit OK here, I just kind of get a placeholder that I have to enter the data. But that's obviously not the point of this uh, session here. So what I want to do is go ahead and create a reference to an Excel spreadsheet. And, and we call that a data link inside of AutoCAD. Now, if I hit this little radio button, as I have here now, you'll notice that it shows that I don't have any data links inside of this drawing at this point. That's because I haven't created them yet, right? So what I need to do is instruct AutoCAD how to, to kind of attach this drawing or attach an Excel spreadsheet to this current drawing. And to do that, we're just going to go ahead and click on this little data link uh, manager, or I can hit the, the drop-down list here. Either way will get me to this same dialog box. And we're going to be coming to this dialog box a couple times throughout, or several times throughout the, the class here this morning. I think Autodesk has made this quite intuitive at this stage of the game, at least, in the sense that what I want to do is just create a new data, or a, a new Excel data link, right? So when I do that, it's, of course, going to ask me to give this some sort of name. And this is just how I'm going to reference it. It doesn't really matter what I name this. However, just in my own experiences, I find the best practice here is obviously um, kind of the, the same logic I like to apply throughout the software, which is just apply a logical name. You know, don't tell or don't call a, uh, a link to a, a door Excel spreadsheet uh, Windows and don't call the Windows one door, right? 
um, try to do yourself a favor and name this something logical. Again, since we're just talking about a foundational sort of um, concept at this point, I'm just going to call this um, AU um, Excel and say OK. So as I mentioned, conceptually here, this is very similar to an external reference that I'm uh, guessing many of us are very familiar with, right? So uh, all I need to do here at this point is just go ahead and browse out and uh, connect to the Excel spreadsheet that I'd like to do. And so this is a you know, pretty common procedure here. I'm just going to click on that little ellipsis there and have a very uh, simple Excel spreadsheet prepared here just called cost estimate. So let's go ahead and bring that into this drawing here by just saying open. Now if I'd like, I can hit OK at this stage of the game. And, and essentially what I'll get are some sort of uh, default sort of boilerplate settings here. But what if I wanted to customize that a little bit? I remember the first time I opened up this dialog box, I, I did what my intuition told me to do, and that was go ahead and click OK. And then I kind of wondered why a bunch of other stuff wasn't working the way I expected it to. And the secret behind that was there's a little disclosure triangle, and I didn't know that that was the technical name for this until the other day. I have a little disclosure triangle down here at the very bottom right corner of this little dialog box, right? And so, you know, as if, you know, kind of a rabbit coming out of a hat, you know, with a magician show or something, I can click on that little disclosure triangle and get a bunch of additional information, additional settings for controlling the way this is going to come into, uh, into my drawing here. And I've detailed what all of these mean inside of your handout here. So uh, I believe it's on, it's like page seven in your handout that I've uh, detailed what all of these little settings here mean. But just real quick here, there's a, and we're going to kind of explore these in a little bit more detail when we, we kind of come to gluing the two of uh, these concepts I'm going to sh uh, frame up together. But essentially what we have here is the option to convert the data formats just into dumb text, right? And, and that's the default here, okay? So what that will do is, and if you go into Excel, this is probably a better way to explain this, we know that we can't multiply two text fields inside of Excel, right? You know, if, if we're in Excel and we do the little apostrophe and then type a number, we know that that is a, a text value at that point, even though it's a, a number, right? And we know if we have, even if it looks like a number, if I've done that little, you know, apostrophe thing inside of Excel, I can't multiply that cell against anything else, right? The same idea applies here inside of AutoCAD. So the default in this case is... AutoCAD is going to convert my data formats to text. And so what that means is just like in Excel, if I, if I make a numerical value, um, a text value, I'm not going to be able to perform any sort of mathematical operations on any of the data in this uh, table inside of the context of AutoCAD, right? And so if I still wanted to keep that sort of flexibility of being able to, to perform mathematical operations, and this is going to be a very important piece when we go to kind of glue things together to create kind of this dynamic uh, cost estimate spreadsheet for some windows a little later on. Uh, we're going to need to make sure that the numerical values remain numerical values. And so if that's important to you, choose one of the keep data formats, okay? If you don't really need to do any sort of additional mathematical operations inside of Excel, in my experience, and, and there's certainly exceptions to every rule, right, the convert data formats to text is probably going to give you the, the closest sort of one-to-one -one, um, sort of appearance from your Excel spreadsheet, right? So there's a, a pro and con to this. In, in my experience, I will just keep this convert data formats to text if I don't need to perform mathematical operations. And that's kind of my black and white uh, kind of line in the sand that I like to establish there. The other one that we have here is cell formatting. And, and just to speak to this one for a, a, a quick moment here, if, or, or, or my recommendation to you, and I'll go ahead and, and kind of tab over to my Excel spreadsheet here, 
you'll notice this is a very simple spreadsheet. And the more important piece here is, notice that all of my text in here is still set to automatic, okay? If we're to put this into sort of more of a, an AutoCAD language, so to speak, making your, your colors, your formatting in Excel to automatic is kind of like putting a block on layer zero, right? We know that a block on layer zero, if I insert it on a layer, right, it assumes the property of that layer. And so, especially if I'm working with uh, CTB type plotting, or even uh, style-based plotting, either one, um, if I override the color here in Excel, I'm gonna have to kind of override it again inside of AutoCAD because that color will pass through. And the trouble is, even if I plot this drawing out with, uh, with my CTB table, it's not one of AutoCAD's index colors, right? So the, the issue there, of course, is that since it's not one of the index colors, it's gonna plot out as a true color, which on a black and white plotter is gonna look like this little milky grayed out um, you know, uh, creation, so to speak. So my recommendation, and I, I'm assuming most of us are, are pretty savvy with Excel in this, uh, in this session here, is even if you have a nice, you know, you know, beautiful Excel spreadsheet, just use kind of equal references to kind of dumb it down a little bit, right? Um, AutoCAD doesn't really do all that great with really complicated styling and formatting from Excel into AutoCAD in, in this particular context. We have OLE objects, which I'll, which I'll hit on at a high level here. But in my experience, it's best to try to keep your Excel spreadsheets somewhat simple, okay? That, that's just... Um, my experience here. So again, automatic is the, uh, the big thing that I like to sort of offer up there. Whoops. So again, I can start with the Excel formatting and this will be a, a snapshot in time or I can perpetually look back to that Excel spreadsheet. And so if I change a color inside of Excel, it will push through to AutoCAD. That might be what you want, that might not be what you want. In my experience, I, I, I typically kind of like to keep the two a little separated here, so I'll, I'll typically choose that bottom value. The other one, and I'll, I'll also hit on the, the operation behind this as well, we also have the ability to modify values inside of Excel, or sorry, modify values inside of our AutoCAD table that results from our Excel spreadsheet, and write that back to Excel directly from the AutoCAD environment. However, that functionality is only available to me if this allow writing to source file checkbox is indeed checked. Uh, I'll turn blue in the face trying to write back to, auto, or write back to Excel if that is not set. So this is kind of the importance of going ahead and, and clicking on that little hidden triangle in the lower right corner because depending on the behavior, this will allow you to control it. Did you have a question? You can. And uh, actually, I'm going to show that in a moment. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK here. And I will go ahead and click OK again and click OK again. I'm really agreeable this morning, right? And all right, specify insertion point. That's. All right, of course. So let's, uh, let's try that again. So the, the data link is already in here. Let's just go ahead and try to insert it. There we go. I don't know what's going on the first time, but there is my Excel spreadsheet. And this is dynamically linked back to Excel, right? So if I were to come in here real quick and flip over to Excel and maybe change this to uh, 1400, I'll just save it real quick, of course, right? And if I come over here, I can say download from source, and I'll, I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail, but you'll see that that value updates. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so the, the question there was, uh, your design team has complicated little, I guess, uh, like double line borders and that type of stuff. <laughs> 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 
Take the Steve Jobs approach. Make it simple. No. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, we, we, we don't have all the formatting options in AutoCAD that we have in Excel. If you want that one-for-one -one formatting representation, um, OLE objects are going to give you the highest fidelity, but there's some kind of wonky issues, to, to use yet another technical term there, um, involved with that. Um, otherwise, really, we're just limited to the single line um, with uh, the formatting in Excel. Good question. Okay, so... Again, that was an effective manner um, or an effective approach there, but that was a lot of steps, right? I had to hit OK a bajillion times just to get this. So like most things in, in AutoCAD, there's a couple different ways to approach this. And, and frankly, if my intent is just to get something from Excel represented with this sort of dynamic link inside of AutoCAD, the approach that I'm going to take is just to go to Excel first, OK? And if you've worked with the OLE approach before, you know, uh, be very common, very familiar to you. And so I'll just start out with this same Excel spreadsheet again. And what I'm going to do is just select the cells that I want to bring over into AutoCAD, right? This is pretty intuitive. And this is why I like this method, is it's, in my opinion, the most intuitive approach that we can take to this. So all I'm going to do here is, you know, hit Control-C or go ahead and click on the Copy uh, button there in the, the Office ribbon. And let's go back over to AutoCAD now. So let me go to this other blank drawing that I've uh, gone ahead and prepared here. Let me just put this back real quick. And so what I'm going to do is right here on the home ribbon, go to my paste. Now, we do need to go into this in a very specific fashion. If I hit paste at this point, all it's going to do is just kind of create a static copy. It'll make it as AutoCAD objects, mind you, but it's going to be a static sort of uh, object, right? It's going to be an AutoCAD table, but it's not going to look back to Excel for any updates or changes, right? And that, of course, defeats the whole purpose we're here, right? So the, the little trick that you have to know here is to come down to paste special. And, and like I said, if you've done OLE objects in the past, this is the exact same procedure with a slight little twist at the end. Now, I really wish AutoCAD defaulted to the little radio button below, which is paste link. But unfortunately, it defaults to the one that's selected right here, just the paste. And so if I come over here and choose AutoCAD entities, I will get an AutoCAD table that kind of mimics what I had in Excel. But again, it's going to be a static copy. And that, again, defeats the whole purpose here, right? And so the secret that you have to know here, the little twist, is instead of clicking on paste, you have to come over here to paste link. Okay? And for years now, we've had the top option that's defaulting here, which is just the Microsoft Excel worksheet. And the result on this is going to be an OLE object. Um, I used to know what the acronym of that stood for, but it escapes me at the moment. But irregardless, what this is, it, it will give me a good one-for-one -one representation of exactly what I saw inside of Excel inside of AutoCAD, and it will be dynamic, okay? The thing is, um, I've, I've run into and I've troubleshot far too many issues with OLE objects that I'd like to, whenever possible, try to steer away from them. I, don't, I won't say that I never use them, but I try not to whenever possible. Um, for instance, if your plotter is one where you have to plot upside down to get the, the left margin correct, and the right margin kind of fatter so you can bind your set, OLE objects will not plot upside down. They will plot right side up. So the net result will be not what you expected, right? So it, it's little reasons like that that whenever possible, I try to avoid the OLE approach. And when this functionality was introduced, this data linking functionality was introduced to AutoCAD, I think it was 2008 time frame, uh, they added this extra little option here, which is AutoCAD entities. And so this is the one that I want to choose because it's going to create an AutoCAD table, okay? And it's going to be an AutoCAD object. So any rules that apply to AutoCAD objects are going to apply to this. And I think the more important piece is this is going to be dynamically linked back to Excel. So if Excel changes, AutoCAD is going to change. So let's go ahead and insert this one here real quick. I'll just say okay. And notice, I hit okay once. I didn't hit okay, what was it, two, three, four? I don't know. I kind of lost count. I hit OK once, and I have a table that I'm uh, that's just kind of jigging out at my 
uh, cursor here. So I'll go ahead and insert this, and you'll see the net result is exactly the same thing. In fact, if I come back over here to Excel, and I change this maybe back to the 1200 value it was before, and I save, I can come back over here to Excel, and it will update. Now, I haven't kicked off the update yet, and oftentimes a little balloon notification will pop up, much like an XREF, but um, apparently AutoCAD's a little sleepy this morning as well. But there's a couple ways that I can approach this, right? If all I want to do is just update this one table, I can just click inside of the table. It doesn't have to be the cell that changed. Uh, of course, I can change multiple cells all at once. And if you're using the ribbon, which I would encourage you to, that's just the paradigm AutoCAD's going in these days, the contextual ribbons are the very thing that made me stop hating the ribbon. <laughs> and so you'll notice that when I clicked into the, um, the table that I created here, a new ribbon popped up in our, or on the top of my screen there, and I have this download from source button. Download from source is basically update the Excel spreadsheet, update the data link. So the other method that I have is if I come down here and if I want to kind of do this, this blanket update across the entire drawing, so maybe I have multiple data links, right? The other option is down here in my status bar, if I have a data link present in the drawing, I'll get this little, I know it's incredibly tiny at the bottom of the screen there, but that little chain link, it's a little, little gold link there. And if I right click on that, I can say update my data links. And so I can right click and say update all data links in this case. And that will go ahead and update that table. Now I should mention that that little, you know, kind of kick the, uh, kick AutoCAD and kind of wake it up. Uh, step there of updating the, the links is only really necessary if you're in AutoCAD and Excel at the same time, right? So if I change something in Excel and AutoCAD wasn't open and I just came to this drawing to open it up, every time I open the drawing, it's going to go back and reread my, my data link. So it's go going to be up to date for me. This is really just something that's necessary um, if you need to see the change kind of in real time when you have both of them open, maybe on dual monitors and, and that type of thing. So the gentleman here asked just a moment ago, and you know, something that I do kind of concede in taking the easy approach, which was just, of course, selecting the cells I wanted and copying and, and pasting with that paste link method, right? Paste special, paste link. That's the, that's the important kicker here. Notice I didn't get any options. While I got the sort of functionality I was out for, I didn't get any options for whether or not it kept the data formats or didn't keep the data formats, if it solved the, the formulas in Excel or tried to solve the formulas in AutoCAD. I, didn't, I wasn't prompted for any of that like I was when I went the manual approach, right? And so what AutoCAD has done here is just sort of taken sort of the, the most popular, I would guess, settings as sort of a default boilerplate. And while those will certainly work for me, I think, most of the time, there's certainly going to be occasions you're going to want to, to change something, right? The default isn't going to work for me for this particular example, right? And so we need to have a method that we can go back, and if I need to be able to perform calculations on those numbers, because I happen to know the defaults are to convert the data formats to text, I need to go and modify the, the data link so that it keeps those, those cost numbers as just that numbers, right? So the way I can do this is by modifying the data link, and I'll find the commands for this over on the Insert tab, okay? And so on my Insert tab, under this Linking and Extraction panel, there's a big button right here, Data Link, okay? So let's go ahead and click on this, and here we have that Data Link Manager. We saw this dialog once already, right? When we went the manual approach, we saw the same exact dialog. So, again, this is kind of going back to the long method, but if I need to make modifications, I can. Also notice, because it didn't give me any options, kind of how it's naming things here. It's just saying Excel data link, one, two, three, four. If I'd like to keep things in a little bit more tidy of a manner, I might choose to update the name of this data link. I can do that just by right-clicking and saying rename. Okay, so that's kind of simple. So if I wanted to, I could say cost, cost estimate, just so I know what this is, that, that idea of just keep it logical, right? 
But if I wanted to modify the way AutoCAD is linking this Excel spreadsheet into uh, this drawing, I'm just going to click on, whoops, I'm just going to double click on the data link in question here. And I get, look at this, the exact same dialogue I had before, right? And so in this case, I can make whatever modifications I would like to make here. So again, notice that the default was to convert the data formats to text. If I knew that I needed to perform calculations on this, the, the 1,200, 450, 700, and 650 numbers are all text, so I can't multiply them by anything. But if I needed that functionality, that's a, a use case where I would come back to this and go ahead and say maybe keep data formats but solve formulas in Excel. I'll use this option if I'm using some of the more complicated Excel functions. AutoCAD doesn't have all of the you know, Excel functions that Excel does, right? There's a reason for that, right? Excel's the, the worksheet tool. AutoCAD's my drafting platform, right? So if, if that's my need, I will oftentimes choose this keep data formats but solve formulas in Excel. I rarely use this top option just because a lot of times my spreadsheets that contain formulas have formulas or have uh, functions, Excel functions, that aren't mirrored inside of AutoCAD. If you just have a simple spreadsheet, it doesn't really matter which one you choose, but just in my experience, the two that I'll flip-flop between is just the convert data formats to text if I don't need to perform additional calculations here, or the solve formulas in Excel but keep the data formats option here. The other important thing to note here, and, and I don't know why this is different, the default when I go through the manual method that we looked at before was that this allow writing to source file was checked. But when I do the paste special method, it unchecks it. I, I don't know why that's a subtle difference. It works kind of in default one way over here and in default another way over here. So that's just a little idiosyncrasy I've noticed with this. So if I did want that functionality of being able to change a value inside of my AutoCAD drawing and write it back to Excel, I would go ahead and uh, check this allow writing to source file box there and just say okay. Sorry, I hit okay a little quicker than I wanted to. But so I can hit okay and hit okay and just because of the way the, and this is what I was talking about where Excel had it looking good, but since I changed it, I changed the formatting, I got something I didn't necessarily expect, right? So this is that kind of, I get a little bit better fidelity if I just say don't convert anything, but I get a little bit more, more flexibility if I choose this method. It's uh, gone ahead and kicked that out to, you know, the nth decimal place. Yes, sir. So if I add a, so the question, uh, let me make sure I have the question right. You, if you added a column in Excel, would it come over here, right? Okay, so, so, so that was the basic question. Um, doing it this method, I don't believe so. And let's just test that real quick. Let's just do, you know, so I'll just save that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the first method I did, I didn't specify a range, I just specified the spreadsheet. So that one should expand. This one I selected the cells, so it doesn't add that extra column. I would need to, um, I could get that over here though by modifying the data link, right? So should be able to come in here and modify this range. So I could change that to C and say okay, and okay, and, and I got that there. All right. So that's sort of the fundamentals of data links. And as I mentioned at the start of our session here, that's really the first foundational topic that we need to kind of get all of these, these concepts that I want to present to you guys to come together here. Okay, so the next thing that I'd like to do isn't necessarily an Excel topic by itself, but I find that it's really, really helpful to use in tandem with 
Excel. And that topic is this idea or this concept of data extraction tables. Has anyone else in here used data extraction before? Okay, so probably about, what, 25 to a third percent of the room? So data extraction is, I think, an incredible addition to AutoCAD here. Um, how many people have been that guy that's tasked with counting all of the water closets or all of the type A fixture, the, the, this type of door, this type of window? We've probably all done it, right? I mean, let's, let's just face it. I was that guy for a long time. That's why I figured this out. Um, and so what we have here is just a, a very simple floor plan. And what I'd like to do is save myself a little bit of time and a little bit of sanity, right? And be able to kind of quickly quantify something in this drawing. And the context that I use this the most is quantifying uh, blocks inside of a drawing. Because blocks oftentimes are something that I'm building that costs me money when I build this, right? And so uh, an excellent example of this is uh, maybe in this context or maybe my doors and windows. So we're going to take a look at the two of these um, in slightly different perspectives here. But let me start with doors as just a, a simple example here. So if I look in this drawing, again, being an architectural drawing, I have a bunch of doors. I have no idea how many doors I have, though. It would be really nice if instead of having to be the guy that's, you know, doing this little tick mark game, right, on this little scratch piece of paper, and then probably manually entering that, that number into an Excel spreadsheet, maybe for a cost estimate. Uh, if AutoCAD could just give me the number, right, that would be awesome. And so that's exactly what data extraction tables are going to do for me. Now, I should mention, in, in the handout, I, I'm going to kind of go a different way here, but uh, I should mention that we can approach this just the same as we did for the data links, in the sense that I can just start the regular table command and, and choose from object data extraction here. So if I'm more comfortable starting out with the regular AutoCAD table command, I have the option available to me to go down this data extraction path. But I like to try to reduce the number of, you know, the absolute number of clicks possible, right? I like to be as lazy as possible. My, my boss always says, you, you're trying to be more efficient, Donnie. And I say, well, no, I like lazy. But instead of coming into the table command, what I will frequently do, just so I don't have to navigate this dialog and then go to another dialog and navigate back, is come back over here to the insert tab that we were on just a moment ago. And up here, just on that same linking and extraction panel, and I'll pull this out just so it matches what you'll see on your screen back at the office, one of the buttons that I have here is extract data. And this button will go ahead and start up a little wizard that's going to ask me some questions about how I want to sort of extract data into a tabular format. Okay, so by tabular format, I'm talking about a table, right? So let's go ahead and click on this. And again, being a wizard, it's going to kind of drive me down the, the path here, try to get me to do what I need to do. And so in this case, I haven't done a data extraction yet, at least for my doors, right? So let's go ahead and create a brand new one, okay? So we'll just go ahead and start there and say next. And this is going to be a file, okay? This is a file. It's... I don't really know, kind of, I haven't tried to open up the contents in ASCII or, what, or in Notepad or whatever, but it's basically going to store all the settings that I, I specify in the next couple pages of this wizard and basically generate something out of it. Uh, in this case, it's gonna, we're going to talk about an AutoCAD table, but I can also write out to an, another Excel spreadsheet or um, access database, a couple different options. We'll see all of that. So let me just go ahead and i kind of save this in a, a directory I have prepared here. I'm just going to call this uh, doors. Pretty logical, right? And when I do that, it, it steps me through to the next page of the wizard, right? How many people in here only work on one drawing in your project? Yeah, none of us, right? Oftentimes, especially in an architectural context, we have multiple levels of a building, right? Wouldn't it be great if I could just count all the doors in the entire project at once? That would be pretty awesome, right? And so while the example I'm going to show, I'm just going to stick to, to a single drawing or a single floor plan, single level of this layout. Um, if I had multiple levels in this particular design, I could add the drawing files for them. So if I'd like, I could come over here and say add drawings, 
and add you know, the second floor floor plan, the third floor floor plan, and um, the, the result is it would scan all of those drawings that I specify here, count all of the doors, and create a table. So we're, I'm obviously getting a little ahead of my, myself and sort of the result of all of this, but I have that flexibility. Okay? But again, just for the, the context of today's class, I'm going to just use this single uh, floor plan here and go ahead and hit next. And you saw the little bar that popped up there. Essentially, what it was doing is scanning my drawing for things that I can extract. And I can extract a lot of different things. The way I use this the most is for blocks and or blocks with attributes. Those are the two things that I use this particular function the most for. But you'll notice um, I've got, uh, well, it's sort of, I have only blocks showing up right there. But let me sort of uh, scroll down here. I have a non-block attribute definition. Um, Looks like all I have in this drawing are blocks. Well, that's OK. What's that? Yeah, I have the, 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 the arc. Oh, there we go. Sorry. I see the arcs and circles. So if I wanted to, for some reason, create a data extraction table for all the arcs in the drawing, I, I can do that. <laughs> um, I have kind of tried to get that working for I need to calculate the total linear length of all the lines on a particular layer. I've I've used this for that before as well. So the, uh, I'm not going to go into that, but that's another potential use case. Now, I happen to know that the name of my door block in here is door imperial. And the first time I came into this command, I did, I think, what any logical AutoCAD user would do. And I started unchecking everything I didn't want. All I wanted was one thing, right? I, so I came in here, and I unchecked the glazing. I unchecked this one, and so on down the list. Until one day, I don't know what possessed me, but I decided to right-click in this dialog box. And then I found a nice little hidden secret in here. So I know this seems completely counterintuitive, but what I'm going to do is uncheck what I want, because that's perfectly logical, right? So, and this was that kind of euphoric epiphany moment, right? When I accidentally one day right-clicked, and I found this little guy right here, invert selection. And instantly, I felt like a complete moron for all the drawings that I had a bajillion blocks in. And I went through this list, unchecking every single one. And, uh, and yeah, so ever since, I've gone the illogical route, selected what I, or unselected what I wanted, and said, invert selection. And just like that, I have just the objects that I want. OK? We probably need to get like the AutoCAD UX team in here to to, to see about that, but we won't go there today, right? So let's go ahead and hit Next. When I hit Next, this screen is going to display a list of properties that I can extract from the object or objects that I selected in the previous screen, right? As we all know, when we go to the Properties panel or Properties palette inside of AutoCAD, the properties that I see there vary based on what I have selected, right? And so this is essentially sort of a mirror image, so to speak. It, it gets into a little bit more granularity here. But at a conceptual level here, this is the same idea, that different objects have different properties, and thereby different objects have different things that I can extract. Okay? So in this case, really all I'm interested in is uh, getting a count of the different doors that I have. I know that I have different swing directions. And I know that I have different wall thicknesses as well in this drawing here. And so this block happens to be a dynamic block. So again, back to that little previous little trick I showed you. If I want to simplify this list a little bit, this category filter little panel over on the right is a, really, uh, a real gem. So what I'm going to do is, once again, very logically deselect what I want. And then I'm going to right click and say invert selection. And so the reason I did that was to filter out the noise. Now all I have are the, the dynamic block parameters that were associated with this door block. Okay. So in this case, let me, you know, I don't really care about opening angle. That doesn't really, you know, a door can open as much as it wants. I don't really care in the context of calculating quantities. But, um, you know, the door size, the hinge, the swing, and wall thickness, those are all things that I need to quantify, right? So let's keep all of those selected, and I'll say Next. 
there's something weird in my drawing here, but that's okay. And what I get is this little table right here. So obviously I've been talking, but in a matter of you know a couple minutes here, I have quantities for all the different door sizes. Something I wish that we could do with the dynamic blocks is instead of this sort of binary approach of zero or one, kind of like system variables inside of AutoCAD, right? Um, I, I wish that I could make this into a little bit more presentable of a table, but unfortunately this is what I get when I extract dynamic block properties is just the zero and one. What is going to be sort of left and right is going to depend on the way I authored my block, right? So the default direction is going to be zero, and the flipped direction is going to be one, right? And, and so if you're, I'm not going to get into the context or into the, a, a long speech about dynamic blocks here, but that's what we're looking at here is that sort of binary piece. But this is still valuable. So if I know how my, my dynamic block was authored, I can read the zero and one and make some sense of it, right? Now, there's something else, though. I might want to make this a little bit easier for myself and maybe sort by wall thickness, right? So let's go ahead and click on the wall thickness. This is just kind of like Excel, right? I'll pick on this, it's going to sort it by the wall thicknesses. Maybe that, that's the most logical thing for me. Now the other thing is, in this particular example, all I've done is extracted a single block, right? So the, the name, I don't really care about that. I don't really need that in the context of this, right? So you know, rather than taking up room in this, uh, this resulting table, it would be kind of nice if I could just sort of take that off the plate for a moment. And so we have the ability to do that by deselecting this show name column. And it gets rid of that for me. All right. And so let me go ahead and just next through this real quick. And the final page is going to present to me two options. Okay. The bottom option here is to an external data file or external file. And the formats that I can write to are Excel or XLS a CSV text file, comma-separated uh, text file, an access database, or just a generic text file. I think it's a tabular file is what we'll create, or the TXT method will create. The, the thing is, with the bottom option is, this is a static operation. It's going to extract this to the file, but if anything changes in my drawing, it's not going to update that external file. Okay? If I want to have a live table, what I want to do is go ahead and insert this extraction table as an AutoCAD table in my DWG file. And that's what the top option is going to give me here. So what I'm going to say is insert the data extraction table into my drawing. And this is going to be a perpetual live link. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a moment. So let me go ahead and hit next. This is why I don't like starting with the table command, because I'm going to start at the table command, I'm going to go off and do everything I just showed you, and then come back to the table command. And that just seems a little kind of redundantly redundant to me. And so that's why I like starting just with that data extraction tool, like I showed us here. Because we're coming back to the table command. I'm going to tell it the, uh, the table style that I'd like to use. And maybe I'll go ahead and give this a, a title, like door schedule. And I will say, next. Finish this up just with a finish button. And let's go ahead and find a location for that, maybe over here somewhere. And let's zoom in there. So let me get this back where it belongs. So there is my door schedule. The nice thing about this, if I come down here, and let me just use the copy command real quick. I'm going to pick this door. And let me just make a couple copies of it. If I update this table, Notice cell 8 right there, update. So let me just, now that I know which cell it is here, let me copy this door a couple more times. And again, we're going to be looking at that cell right there. Okay. So if I click in here and say download from source, it changes and updates for me. So I always have an accurate count of the, in this case, number of doors I have in this drawing. This is incredible for cost estimating, right? So this is pretty helpful, but, and so at this point, we've kind of explored the two foundational topics. We've, we know that we can bring Excel spreadsheets and have them dynamically linked into my drawing. And we now know that I can do something like this and scan my drawing for some sort of properties, in this case, a block, right? 
and count all of them up. But the reality is, again, it's that peanut butter and jelly analogy. A peanut butter sandwich is great, but a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is a little bit better, right? And so what I'm talking about here is look at my windows. And I think this is probably the more typical approach that we find, especially with doors and windows in the context of our AutoCAD drawings, right? So what I have here are my door, or sorry, my windows. Yeah, that's what those are called, right? And what I have done here is just tagged them with a letter, right? I have a type A window, a type B window, and does this kind of reflect kind of what you guys kind of see in your drawings? And so the reality to this is I have the type A and B, and I want to quantify them, and we know that I can do that now, right? With the data extractions, I can count all the type A, type Bs, and get a total count for them. But for this data extraction table, that resulting data extraction table to really be valuable to me, it needs some additional information, right? Things like manufacturer, maybe the, the finish of the, the window, the cost, right? But where does that information usually live? I don't usually put that in my AutoCAD drawing, do I? I usually have that in kind of an Excel spreadsheet somewhere, right? And so that's the exact scenario I have set up here. And let me go ahead and open this up real quick. And so here I have just a very simple window specification Excel spreadsheet. I only have two window types in here. And you'll notice I have a key A and B, and this, of course, corresponds to what I have in, in, sorry, in AutoCAD. And I think this really kind of matches what we have in the real life, right? So I'm using this in the context of Windows, but this could be in a facilities management capacity. I have room number with the person who sits there, right? There's a couple different approaches to this. And, and so what I'd really like to do to have a nice, useful window schedule in AutoCAD is to be able to count the number of A and B windows that I have in my drawing and append all of this information from Excel. And it's just one dynamic table that's updating. If I add a new window, it'll update the count. And if I change anything about the unit cost or the color finish or whatever the case might be, that that information could also update in Excel. And so this is what I was talking about, the, found, the importance of those foundational topics. So what we're going to do now is combine these two concepts. We're going to take a look at data extraction, and we're going to combine data extraction with a data link. And data link, of course, being the way that we go out and get those, uh, those Excel spreadsheets into AutoCAD. So let me come back over here to AutoCAD, and what I want to do is just start once again with this extract data tool. This is the same tool we did or used for the uh, door count that I just did, okay? So let's go ahead and start this real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new data extraction and I'll call this Windows and just hit save. And so let me just kind of progress through this real quick. I happen to know that the block that I want is called AGLAZ for glazing, right? So let me deselect the one I want, and I'll do this little inverse uh, or invert selection method that I showed you. And I'll hit next. And you know what? I, really all I want are the, the total number of type A or total number of type B windows. That's really all I'm out for here. So let me just right click and say uncheck all because I don't really want to extract any, any of the properties. I just want to count the total number of A, the total number of B windows in this drawing. And, oh, whoops, sorry. I need to at least have lock unit there. Yes, so let me do that. Oops, sorry. I need my block attribute. I knew I was missing a step there. So. Uh, let me do my block attribute, and the window type is the attribute that I want here. So you, you see here that, you know, the, the CAD manager who set up this block gave a bunch of other properties, but of course, being the AutoCAD user I was, I was too lazy to fill them out, right? Because that's too much work. So all I'm going to do is window type here. Now, there's another thing, too, and, and I should mention this, too. We know that window underscore type is a capital letter thing, is great for block attributes, right? That's a, a great way to name the block attribute. But if I want a more meaningful title, 
in my attribute extraction table, we have the ability to do that. The default is going to be the name of the attribute. In this case, window type. But if I want to override that so I have a little bit more usable of a net schedule here, I can go ahead and in this display name column, maybe I'll just type in uh, type. Okay? And so now, if I hit next, here we go. I now have all of my type A and type B windows. And notice the, the column header for the AB column there says type, not window type, the name of my attribute. So this just makes the, the net resulting or the resulting table a little bit more useful for me. So we're going to apply some of the same methodology that we did with the, the door data extraction that I did. I don't want the, the door name here, right? So let's um, deselect that. And I probably want to sort in alphabetical order, right? Otherwise, the contractor is going to find even new names or even more names to call me, right? So we'll sort that. And, you know, the other thing is, I mean, the count, I have the data that I want, but I would like the window type, the A, B column, to be on the far left there. So it's type A and then the count. And so we have that flexibility here as well. In fact, I can just pick this up and drag it over and adjust the order that the columns display here. So I have a lot of flexibility in this dialog. So this is the same thing we just did with the doors. But how can I get the information I just showed you from Excel, the manufacturer, the color, the cost, all that information over here into AutoCAD? And you, you might notice over here on the right-hand side of the dialog, I have a link um, external data button. I wish this just said data link or Excel data link. It kind of matched things a little bit. But this is essentially an Excel data link that we were just talking about at the start of our session here. So let's do this. It gives me this dialog. And what I need to do is establish a new Excel data link. So this is exactly what we did just a little while ago, right, when we, we were just inserting that rough cost estimate Excel spreadsheet, right? So let me go ahead and click on the Excel data link manager um, button right here. And we come back to this dialog. We're, we should be pretty familiar with this dialog at this point, right? And so let's go ahead and create a new Excel data link. And I'm going to call this... Um, Windows, right? And say OK. And I'm going to go ahead and just connect to that Windows specification Excel spreadsheet. This is the one I just showed you a moment ago with the type A and type B windows and the Pella and, and that information. And I'll say open. Now it is important because I want to show you another thing after we do this data extraction of performing some calculations on this data. So if we go back to what I, I framed up a little earlier, we know that the default is AutoCAD's going to convert the numerical values in this Excel spreadsheet to text. And when it does that, it disqualifies those numerical values from me being able to perform any additional calculations on them. I'd like to do some additional numerical calculations on the numbers, the cost data in that Excel spreadsheet. Okay. So this is an, an example where I am going to go from convert data formats to keep data formats. And even though I don't have any Excel formulas over in the Excel spreadsheet, I'll use this option just to, I, I've had better luck with this option for, for no other reason than that. So that's what I want to do. I want to make sure that the numerical values are numbers. OK, and I'll, I'll go ahead and say OK. And I will OK through this dialog. So at this point, I have two things going on, right? I have my data extraction that's counted up the number of win types of windows that I have. And I have the Excel data link. And, and these are two separate entities at this point. And so I do need to provide AutoCAD with a little bit of instruction of how do I get the two to come together? How do I take the peanut butter slice of bread, the jelly piece of bread, and put it together into a sandwich? And the way we do that is we have to have common columns, right? So in my drawing, I know that that sort of, and this is kind of getting into database speak, right? That I know that the unique key is the window type, the type A, the type B, the AB. And so I know that that is named in my data extraction table as the type column, All right? So let's go ahead and pick that. Now, here's a, an interesting, you know, sort of debacle. In my Excel spreadsheet, I use the term key. 
So key and type are, I mean, it's the, representing the same data, but they're different names. And the nice thing is, is because of the way AutoCAD approaches this, this is okay. The, the columns don't have to be named the same thing, just the columns need to match. And what I mean by matching is A and B. So what I can do is the external data column is going to be that key column. So I'm going to select that. And this is going to take those two sort of foundational topics that we've talked about, the data links, AutoCAD to Excel, the data extraction, reading information in my drawing, and bring it together for me. Now, I know this is going to work, or I, I say that, and AutoCAD will probably prove me wrong, but I'm going to say check match real quick. This is just a best practice I like to do, just to make sure that AutoCAD was able to sync up the data between the two. Okay? If it didn't find information, if I didn't have kind of a one-for-one -one relationship between the extraction and the Excel, it would give me a uh, kind of an unsuccessful uh, status here. And so everything is good here. Likewise, I should point out that I can choose, if I don't want every column from Excel coming over here, I can cherry pick those as well and, and only select the ones that I'd like. And that's what that bottom piece there is representing are the columns in my Excel spreadsheet. In this example, I want all of that information, all of that's pertinent to this window schedule that I'm going to create. So let me just say OK. And as soon as I say OK, look what happens to this dialog. It populates all of that, that extra data. I do want to point out the little chain link that's at the column headers for all of these. That icon is telling me that that information is coming from Excel. The headers with help that little link are coming from the drawing itself. So the count, obviously, Excel has no concept of that. Now, because I told it to keep the data form or the, uh, the, the data types from Excel, you might recall when we modified this with the simple data link example early on and I changed that, I got kind of this weird, you know, four decimal place thing on the cost column that I didn't want. To prevent that from happening to me at this point, I need to go ahead, or what I'd like to do, is make sure that the unit is formatted as a currency value. And this wasn't necessarily obvious to me, this was another one of those, I just dealt with it, and got frustrated at AutoCAD for the longest time, until one day, I once again had this really novel idea to right click, who knew, right? And so what I'm going to do is come over here to the, the unit or the unit cost column, and I'm going to right-click on it. And again, this wasn't obvious to me up front, but here I have the option to set the column data format. In this case, I'm going to format this as a currency value. So I'm going to go ahead and pick on this guy, and like I said, go ahead and format this as currency, and say OK, and now that's going to be formatted as a currency value, just like I'd like it. All right, so let's go ahead and put this in my drawing. So like before, I'm going to insert this as an extraction table in my drawing, and that's going to create a table similar to the door schedule we just, just did a moment ago. And so let me just say window, schedule here, and I will say next and finish. And let's go ahead and insert that. So here I have a pretty good window schedule, I'd say, right? And just like the doors, if I came over here and I copied one of these windows, because maybe I added a window in the middle of the yard, because, you know, that's decorative, right? And I came in here and updated this. This count should change from 33 to 34. So this, this table is always going to be up to date. Now, this is the other piece. When, when I look at this, this is awesome, I think. But when I look at this, it kind of leaves me wanting a little bit more. And that little bit more, I think, in this case would be, wouldn't it be pretty awesome if we could get a total cost for each window type? So what I mean by that is, if I could multiply the 34 count by the unit cost of 200 and get a total value for that, that would be really useful, wouldn't it? And so we can do that as well. So what I want to do is modify this data extraction table, OK? And so you, you might recall, when we set up this data extraction table, I created a new data extraction file. And 
Um, it, it might not seem like it serves really much of a purpose, but this is the purpose. I can come in and change how I've set up this data extraction. So the change I'd like to make to this is go ahead and make it do some math for me. Multiply the 34 by 200 and the 8 by 300. So to do that, I'm going to come back to the data extraction button that we used a little earlier. Okay? And the big difference here, or really the only difference is, instead of saying create a new extraction, I'm just going to edit an existing extraction. Okay? And so by editing an existing extraction, I'm going to come out here, and I'm going to pick that window extraction file that I created a moment ago, and just go ahead and open this. Now, at this point, I can next, and it gives me the opportunity to change anything that I, I did to create this extraction table. And everything's good here, right? I don't really need to make any changes to the overall structure of it. I just want to add a new column to the extraction table. So for that reason, I'm just going to next through all of these pages of the, um, and why did you do that to me? Oh, I know what happened. No? Yeah, ah. That was my dry run file. Sorry, I selected the wrong uh, DXE file here. So um, this is the one that I just wrote. The other one was one I was doing when I was uh, working on this in my room. So let's next through this. And there we go. That's what I was expecting. So this is where we were just before, just before we inserted this as an, an extraction table a moment ago. And this was another one of those little gems that I didn't realize for the longest time. I always wished, and I manually open, you know, brought up my calculator and multiplied the number times the cost, and I, I manually did that until, again, I, I right-clicked one day. It's amazing what you can find in these right-click menus, right? And I saw this insert formula column. Well, geez, that's interesting. So let's go ahead and try this one out real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and open this guy up. And I'm going to name this total. So this is going to be the header for that column, right? That's what this name is going to be. And for some, this might look a little intimidating. If you've done many, much database work, this is you know, right up your alley. But it's really not as intimidating, I think, as it might look. What I want to do is multiply the count. So I'm just going to double click on the count column. I'm going to multiply it. And I want to multiply that by what? My unit, right? So I'm just going to come down here and double click on unit. And it builds the formula for me. OK, so again, it looks a little intimidating, but I think it's you know, relatively simple here. Just to make sure that this is doing what I expect, I'm going to say validate, just to make sure that it's a good equation. And it is in this case. So we'll just say OK and OK. And look at that. I have the, the total in this case. It's multiply the total number of units times the cost. And having the total is really helpful. But I don't like going down to you know whatever penny that is. right? I'd, ha I'd have to have some pretty good tin snips to get a penny that small. right? So let's format that as currency once again. So the same thing we did for the unit column, I'm just going to right click on this total column and say, set the column data format. Okay? So this is just doing the same thing. I'll say currency. Um, I'll just round this down to the nearest dollar. Say OK. And next. And I technically don't have to insert a new table. It will update the one that's here. However, in my experience, it kind of blows up the existing table. I, I don't know why. It just That's been my experience. Maybe yours will be a little different. So for that reason, even though I already have a window schedule in here, I'm going to insert another table and just get rid of the old one once I insert it. Okay? So again, I don't have to check this box. I can hit Next, and it will update this existing table in my drawing. But it's going to most likely, unless you know, AutoCAD decides to be nice to me right now, uh, kind of blow this, this table up a little bit. So let me go ahead and hit Next. And we'll just hit Next again and Finish. And let me put that in there. And that's what I was talking about. It kind of blows up the uh, existing table. This is just what I found. And now I have that total column. 
All right, so I've gotten this far. Wouldn't it be nice to know the total window cost? So add up all of the rows? That would also be pretty helpful. So let's go back to the data extraction. We can do that as well. And I'm just going to come in here and say, edit the existing one, the windows. And again, just next through all of this, because I'm just going to take all of the same defaults once again. And I should have done this before, but if I right click on the column here, I have an insert totals footer. That's cool. Right? So insert table footer. There it is. It's adding up all of the rows. So I'll just next through this once again, do the same thing, insert the new um, extraction table here, and see, it worked for that one. So anyway. But this is a live table now. So if I come in here and I copy these windows, right? Let me click into here. I'll say download from source. It updates the count. It redoes the math. Everything is nice. We just solved world peace, one table. All right. So I think that's the, some of the coolest stuff that we can do with Excel and AutoCAD. Yes? Um, not usually. <laughs> uh, I kind of have to kick it a little harder with the uh, update. Yes, ma'am. When I open the file, it, so the question was, will it update this if I forget to hit download source? If I close out and reopen, it is going to reread that, kind of like, um, kind of like with XREFs. These behave very similar to an XREF. Yes. So by default, it's going to append it to the end, but I can I can move those around. Okay. So I have a couple more topics to get through. I, I will answer questions, but I just want to make sure that I get through all of the topics. So if if you don't mind, let me just sort of continue on here. So some other things here, and let me just kind of start a new drawing real quick. And. How many folks in here have used script files in the past? OK, yeah, I mean, anybody that's probably used AutoCAD for more than five years has probably used script files at one point or another. In the days before we had a batch plot inside of AutoCAD, what did we do? We batch or we used scripts, right? <laughs> and, and so while the need for scripts, I think, has kind of come down a bit, they're still incredibly valuable, and I use them a lot. Something I, I like to use things, I happen to be a civil 3D user, and there's a couple dialogues that it will insert coordinates of, there's a problem at this you know, Cart our Cartesian coordinate, but there's no way of kind of figuring out where that is and, and kind of identifying trends where I might have errors in my drawing. So a case that I've, I've used here is extracting that to a text file and parsing that in AutoCAD or in Excel and writing a script file from it. So let me, I'm just going to show a very simple example here. And yeah, let me just create a new Excel file here. And let's say I just wanted to draw lines from one point to another. Okay, and, and maybe I had a bunch of um, coordinates just in an Excel spreadsheet, right? So here I have X and Y, and I don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make up a few numbers here. So maybe 6 and 8 and 9 and 3 and, I don't know, 5 and 4. Whoops. Oops. Uh, three, two, something like that. I, that. That should work. And what I want to do is just draw lines between these points. I want to play a big boy game of connect the dots. We do that a lot, don't we? So how can I do that? I could certainly you know, key these values in. But I know that the line command, and let's just come over here to AutoCAD for a moment. If I start the line command, the first thing it does is asks me for the first point. So I could type in a coordinate of like 3, 4, right? And hit enter. And if I wanted to go to maybe 9, 6, I could type, type that in and hit enter. Okay? So scripts are just emulating what I would otherwise type at the command line. So with a little bit of imagination here, we can come over to Excel. And I'll just call this script. And what I want to do is just create what I would type at the command line through an Excel formula. And so the way I'm going to do that is I know the command that I want is going to be a line command. So I'm going to say equals, and then in quotation marks, line. Now I know I have to hit enter 
in order to ask it for me to enter coordinates, right? And so we know that we can hit enter or we can hit the space bar. If I need to do an enter, the scripting language for that, I don't want this to become a script, you know, an AutoCAD scripting class, but just more of an introduction here, is the semicolon. So I could put a semicolon in. I'm just going to put a space in because it does the same thing for this command, right? So I'm going to say space and then quotation mark. And what I need now are the coordinates, right? So I'm just going to do a quick and. I'll click the X coordinate. I'll do another and. I know what I need to type in after that first coordinate is a comma, right? So I'll do the comma, quotation mark, and the Y value. All right? So that's my first coordinate. And so what I know I need to do then is hit Enter once again. So I'm going to go ahead and do in quotation marks once again the you know, and quotation space quotation, just so it's a, a simple space there to hit Enter. And I know the next thing from, Excel, or from AutoCAD is that it's going to ask me the destination point, the second point, right? And so the second point is going to be this one right here. Whoops. And this point, and we'll just emulate exactly what I did just a moment ago. So the comma and the second point, and this is something that it will break if you don't remember this. How do we end the line command? We hit enter, right? And so it is important that I do yet another and at the end with just a space. And so here's just a very simple example of I've taken an Excel formula. If I hit enter here, what did I do? Oh, I forgot my and. There we go. So this is what I would otherwise enter at the command line, right, for the line command. So just with a, a quick little Excel piece here, I can just fill this down real quick. And this is, in essence, a very simple script file. So I'm just going to copy this, Control-C. And if I come over here to AutoCAD, I'm going to click into my command line and just press Control-V. And again, this is a very simple example. I would encourage you to use your imagination on this. What I have personally used this for a lot, again, is in the context of Civil 3D, where I get this error dialog box with a bunch of X and Y coordinates, and I want to identify trends of where things are kind of screwing up and by drawing. And so I'll, I'll get that, that X, Y value into Excel and pair this with the point command. I'll say point and then X and Y, and just go down the list, and it'll create 100 different points, and I can identify what's going on in my drawing. So that's the way I've personally used this. I'm sure you guys can come up with a ton of different examples yourself. Yes? So the, the question was, if I had points in a drawing and I wanted them to be in a tabular format that I could have in Excel, right? So the answer to that question is I could use the data extraction tables that I use for blocks, X and Y, um, properties are properties that I can extract. So I could create a table from that. All right. All right. So I have just a few more minutes. I want to show something else. And um, again, I, I originally came up with this workflow because I was the CAD technician in charge of managing 600 drawing sheets uh, for an incredibly large project. And I needed to make sure that my sheet index on the cover page corresponded with what was in my title block. And this was in AutoCAD 2002, so we didn't have Sheet Set Manager at the time. And so I scratched my head, and I said, there has to be a better way. And sure enough, I found that better way in what place? None other than, I think, everyone's favorite tab in AutoCAD. Anyone? Oh, come on. Express Tools, right? We all love Express Tools, right? And what piqued my curiosity were these two tools up here at the top, which are import attributes and export attributes. Hmm, what can I do there? And so again, I originally developed this workflow to manage several hundred drawing sheets. Um, I would do that today, of course, with Sheet Set Manager. But uh, while I don't use it for that context anymore, there's a bunch of other things that I might, that I'll use it for today. I think a good example is maybe with a floor plan like this, for whatever reason, I just got a call from the client, and they don't want to number the door, or sorry, number the rooms in this drawing in the hundreds, so they don't want this to be room 190, 191, 192. 
I don't know, maybe they want it to be room 1,090, 1,091. I'm sure we've all gotten that call from the customer, right? Or, again, in the facilities management context, I have the room numbers. I, I can do some Excel voodoo in the back end to assign the people who sit in this office and, and, and kind of do the same approach here and write this back to block attributes. But I'm going to kind of keep this as a simple example here. I encourage you guys to use your imagination. So to update these room tags, I know I could come in here and double click and click in here and hit the zero, but I got a lot of rooms and that's going to take a lot of time. So let's abandon that method. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick on one of these room tags. I'm going to use another one of my favorite commands that have been uh, recently added to AutoCAD, which is select similar. Anyone use this one? Yeah. This is awesome. So I'm just going to pick that one room tag. I'm going to use select similar. It's going to find all the other room tags in this entire drawing. OK? So let's do that real quick. So I'm going to say select similar. All of the room tags are selected. And now what I'm going to do is just come over here to my Express Tools, and I'm going to say Export Attributes. What this tool is going to do, and let me go ahead and click on it, it's going to read all of the block attributes that I have selected right now, which are my room tags, and it's going to write them into a tab-delimited text file. And while this isn't true Excel interoperability, we all know that Excel can, of course, handle a tab-delimited file quite well, right? And so what I'm going to do here, I'll just call this um, you know, door export. and save this. And let's come back over here to Excel real quick. And I'm going to create a new worksheet real quick. And I'm going to kind of show a simple example here. But we know to bring in that text file, we'll go over to the data, or the data tab in Excel, right? And we're going to say, from external data here. And here is the text file that AutoCAD just wrote for me. So let me go ahead and say, import here. And again, it, it kind of Excel can figure out what this is. So I'll just say finish and OK. And you know, this is just importing text files 101 for AutoCAD. So what I have here is all the information. Something I need to point out here, though. This relies on the handle ID for the object. The handle ID is something that we normally don't have to worry about inside of AutoCAD. But AutoCAD, an AutoCAD DWG file is essentially just a gigantic database. And the way it keeps track of the difference between this line and that line is through this little unique identifier, which is a handle. So this isn't going by proximity. It's going by the programmatic name of that object in AutoCAD. So if I erase a door tag or a room tag and I insert one right back in its place, it's going to be a new handle. And this method is going to break on you. Okay, So it's important that the original block stays in place. But irregardless, let me just do a very simple example here. I'm going to use the, the room number header here. And what I want to do is change this from room 172. And again, I uh, apparently wasn't too good naming these uh, rooms. I have two room 172s. That'll make the facilities guys happy. So I'm going to go ahead and say equals 172. And what I want to do is just subtract 100 from that and add 1,000. Right. Just a really simple formula. It makes that value 1,072 now. So just with a quick fill down, I have essentially renumbered all of these room tags. What I'm going to do here in this case is just hide this column. When we export from Excel to a text file, it doesn't include the data in the hidden columns. Okay. In practice, what I oftentimes do is I have an import column that has all of the data, and then I'll pass it through to another worksheet in here that has it formatted as well. So I'll get in a little bit more, um, sort of a more robust example here. But just for the essence of this, I'm going to come up here and say, uh, save this as a tab delimited TXT file. And say, save. Agree to all the stuff that Excel wants me to. And then use the export attributes cousin, which is import attributes. So I'm just going to say import attributes here and say and choose that file that I just um, wrote from Excel and hit open. As soon as I do that, all of these room tags are going to update. So I'll say up, open. If I zoom in now, all of the room numbers are updated. 
So this is just a really simple example. I'd encourage you to use your imagination uh, with this. I've used this for hydrology blocks that I had to insert into AutoCAD drawings. I've used this for facilities, importing people who sit here information. There's a whole wealth of things that you can do here. So with that, that does bring me to the end of my scheduled time. So I will stick around for any questions that you guys might have. This is my contact information. It's also in your handout. So uh, either way, feel free to um, ping me if you have any additional questions. And like I said, I'll hang out for any additional questions that you guys might have. But otherwise, thank you for joining me. Uh, please, if you're so inclined, uh, give me great reviews. Uh, but please be honest. I, I will read those reviews, and I appreciate the feedback that you'll give.